Liverpool, Manchester United, West Ham. Which one of those four teams is going to steal that fourth place in the Premier League this season and get into the Champions League next season? Yes, people, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a smashing Thursday evening and a fantastic weekend. Obviously, the weekend is coming up tomorrow. I'm absolutely buzzing, you know, Friday tomorrow. Huge weekend of football. Spurs travel to the bridge on Sunday. Absolutely love Chelsea win. Hopefully we can get something. But look, incredible night last night. But it really got me thinking. And I wanted to do this video because I think it's an interesting one. Who will get that fourth place? Because Chelsea, you know, could drop out. And there's questions about it right now. But I highly doubt they do with the calibre and the quality they have in their team. So for me... Chelsea and Liverpool are locked in. They're going to battle it out for second all season. I think, you know, it'd be the biggest miracle since Jesus for Manchester City to drop out of the top four. So it all comes down, for me, to that fourth place. Is it going to be Arsenal? Is it going to be Spurs? Is it going to be Manchester United? Is it going to be West Ham? We'll start off with Tottenham Hotspur, right? You know, it's the Spurs channel. Have to start off with Spurs. And speaking of Spurs, absolutely mental. Mental night last night. Haven't felt like that since Ajax away, but look, absolutely crazy. And you've got to look at the way we're playing right now. And anyone else who isn't a Spurs fan has to really, you know, change who we are in their minds. And Rory Jennings said it fantastically. And I think, you know, the way the way he spoke about it, you know, you know, being such a big Chelsea fan, the way he's finally admitting that Spurs have got something going. You know, he went on to say in his video the other day that people need to redefine who Tottenham Hotspur are in their heads, because we are no longer that bottling club. We are no longer that club that are going to throw points away. We're going to fight till the very end, and we have shown that since Antonio Conte has come in. I have no doubt in my mind, even if he isn't backed, if he stays on next season for a whole season, Antonio Conte, at the very least, will get Tottenham Hotspur Champions League football. But he's come in midway through a season where the club's not in a good state at all, and he is bringing massive confidence in nine games, unbeaten, picking up huge points, big wins, great performances, you know, fantastic performances against the likes of Liverpool and Leicester and some real, real good teams in the Premier League. And look, since he has come in, we've looked a completely different team under Nuno. Our, our style of play has been more attacking, although we can start off pragmatic in games, we eventually get, you know, the three points. And he has bought that winning mentality to Tottenham Hotspur and for the time being, Taken away that Spursy tagline, and you've got to look at his achievements since coming in. You know, nine games in the Premier League unbeaten. I believe he's won six of them, seven of them, or something. He's only drew a few. One of those was against Liverpool. And last night, I think, was the perfect example of why I believe we have a real chance. And I'll give my final verdict on who I think at the end of the video. I'm sure you can almost guess because it is a Spurs channel, but we, we have a real chance of getting it, you know, this season. This is the biggest belief I have in this team to get Champions League football since, you know, since the Pochettino days. And I really believe we can push on and really do think we can get top four. That fourth place, potentially, with the amount of games in hand, we've got third or second. And look, last night was a perfect example. This team is going to fight till the end. And there's no doubt, no doubt in my mind, if we get two quality players, you know, Two players we've been linked with today. Diego Carlos and Dom Troyer, we will get top four. I really believe that. Romero and Dai still to come back. Son, I believe we're playing an attractive brand of football and I really, truly believe we have a great show. Going from all the happiness that's linked with Spurs, high flying in the league at the minute, playing fantastic football, not bottling things like we normally bloody do. We have to talk about the sad factor that Arsenal right now are a bloody good team. Ow. Ow. That really hurt. Right there. Right there in the heart. Oh. Arsenal are a really good team. I can't stand admitting it. Oh, man. It really does frustrate me. But that team right now, they have all the ingredients to get top four. They've got structure. They've got a real structure. They've got a style of play. You can see what they're going out, you know, to do on the football pitch. They've got fantastic young players that are only going to get better and better and better. And in my opinion, they've had the best youth academy in the Premier League for the last few years. And keeping on to those players. Players such as Smith Rowe, Bakayo Saka, you know, Martinelli, 
those players are only going to get better. And the thing is, because they've grown, you know, grown up with Arsenal, they love the club. They absolutely love the club and they are not looking to move any time in their career. They wouldn't want to move. And that's why I believe Arsenal just haven't built a good squad for the now. You know, when it comes to Spurs, we have to look four years ahead and see half of our players won't be here then. Arsenal, a majority of theirs will be at the club in four years' time. And if they're not, they will have a bloody load of money to spend. And this is what Arsenal have done. They've brought through these young players who love the club, who have that winning mentality. The likes of Bukayo Saka, fantastic winger. Emil Smith-Rowe, really, really creative player. Martinelli, good finisher. You know, and Arteta... And it pains me to say this, amongst all the laughing and all the, you know, rebuilding all this, trust the process, the process is working. And I think, I think if you were an Arsenal fan and constantly calling for Arteta out last, you know, last season, I said it on a couple of my videos, I think you were completely wrong. I said last season when Arsenal were losing those games, you've got to give this guy time. As much as I hate admitting it as a Spurs fan, I can see there's an identity that he is going to bring to the club. And I was right, he has brought that identity, he has brought that winning mentality, he's developed good young players and they look a completely different team for what they were two years ago. And for me, us and Arsenal are the two top contenders for that fourth place. So I really do believe, you know, it's a shame that both these teams are, you know, getting a run of form like this in the same season because, you know... If Arsenal didn't have a team they had right now, or we didn't, the other team would be absolutely cruising into that fourth position. But I believe it could be a real North London fight for that fourth place. And when that game does actually get played, and I believe this could go down right to the wire, and it could cause another team to slip in, and I'll get to that soon. But that's why I believe that North London derby is going to be absolutely huge. Not just because it's a derby when we eventually play it, but because of the stakes this season. It's massive. Major Arsenal's debts games. They've got the likes of Burnley, Norwich. We've got Chelsea, some easier fixtures. Both of us, you know, after Chelsea, we've got easier fixtures. So both teams are going to be picking up points. And I see this one going right down to the wire. But are we forgetting about West Ham? I understand we've got four games in hand. And, you know, so do um, so do Arsenal, the scum down the road. You know, they've got two games in hand. West Ham haven't got any games in hand, but they are collecting points. Although they did lose against Leeds, this is a really good West Ham team. And I think people are taking it for granted, you know, West Ham doing well, West Ham doing well. How much it means to those fans, you know, to the spammers, as we like to call them, to, um, to be doing this well in the league is massive. And I think, as a Spurs fan, very similar to Arsenal, it pains me not as much that they are building something at that club. They've bought in David Moyes a couple of seasons ago and he's redefined them from a relegation team within two or three seasons to fight for Champions League football. That's mental. Never did I think West Ham would even be in Europe. And this season they are flying. Fourth place right now. Fourth place, you know. And I think us and Arsenal are taking the attention off them because if we weren't excelling both the North London club, it would all be on West Ham. Fourth place in the league through to the next stage of the, the, you know, the Europa League. And if us and Arsenal do drop points and we draw a couple of games here and there and draw against each other, West Ham could slip in and they really could take that fourth place. And moving on from West Ham, the last contender, so I believe, Wolves potentially a shout, but Manchester United, I believe they've got, what, one or two games in hand. I think people are forgetting that they've got those games in hand. With the quality they have in their team... They can push on and get something. You can't rule out Manchester United. Do I think, you know, they're likely to get top four? Probably not with, you know, the form the other teams have been on this season. But when you've got Ronaldo and Bruno Fernandes and David De Gea and, you know, these quality players. And even Anthony Alangri has been fantastic recently. You can't rule them out. And I think United fans are massively overreacting. Hugely overreacting to Rangnick. One little bad performance a one all draw against the Newcastle or a two all against Villa and their fans are going mental. I I, I can't seem to understand it because you've got to look at his, this guy, he's not a proper manager really. He's a director of football and all this ranking the professor. I don't believe in any of it. I think it's a load of rubbish. I think he's just as smart as a Dean Smith or, you know, a um or or a Neil Warnock is. But <laughs> or Sean Deitch. I you know, I I think he's just as clever as them. He, he comes across, though, as a very knowledgeable man. But I don't think 
I don't believe in all this Rangnick, the professor. I just think he plays an unusual formation and he gets labelled it. But he could do it in Austria, he could do it in Germany. Premier League's different gravy. But going back to my point, I do think United fans are overreacting. I think you've got to look at the, you know, the form since he come in. He has been picking up wins. You know, 1-0 against Palace, 1-0 against Norwich. Although, you know, they have to fight and the performances can't be too good. You United fans have been banging on for years about it's not about the performance, it's about the win. And they have been getting them. They've only dropped a few points. They've only drew to Villa, lost to Wolves and drew to, um, to Newcastle. Newcastle embarrassing. Villa have got a new player at Villa Park. You know, the circumstances were gutting for them. But you've got to take that draw. And Wolves were very unlucky. But I think apart from that, they've been, you know, picking up huge results under him, under Rangnick. And they could be massive contenders for top four. So now the decision for that fourth place. I'm going to go for a massive curveball here. I'm going to go for a massive curveball. And I'm going to say that Tottenham Hotspur and Arsenal will get top four. Tricked you there, didn't I? I've been saying the whole video, I think Chelsea are secure in that third place. I don't think they are. I think we know Chelsea's history of sacking managers so quickly. And as, as, as wrong as it would be, I could see Tuchel getting sacked. I'd really disagree with it, but I think they've got a history of it. They did it with Ancelotti. They've done it with so many you know, other managers where they don't give them enough time to build something. And they get sacked straight away. I could see that happening. I really could. They'd have to then bring in an interim manager, then bring in someone new. And I just think Chelsea right now, they've won three of their last 11 games. If they lose to us on the weekend and Arsenal win, they're in massive jeopardy. They're not looking ahead of them to City and Liverpool. They're looking below them. They're looking to even secure top four, let alone a second place battle with Liverpool. You know, Liverpool have proved that they can pick up points without their top players, without Salah, Mane and all of these players. Chelsea haven't. Chelsea really haven't. And I think with Chelsea, I think you compare them this season. They started off well, understandably, but recently they've been really poor, pathetic, and something doesn't look like with the players and the attitude or anything at the club right now. You compare that to Arsenal. Really strong attitude. You know, a real structure at that football club. I think they'll get top four. Spurs confidence, battling out to the end. I'm saying that both Spurs and Arsenal will get top four and Chelsea will miss out. It's a very strange curveball. Please comment down your predictions for top four in the comment section down below. This has been a very interesting video to do. Thank you for watching it. And as always, commonly Spurs, Enoch out. In Conte, we trust.